Hi, this is the first in a new series of videos from Father Moo, aka me. I'm going to try and get directly to the point with no dithering, so let's dive in. There's a group on Facebook called Small Eurorack Systems. I've been a fan of Small Eurorack Systems since before this group existed, when there was just a thread on Modwiggler. And I'm not here to debate the Facebook group members, but let's just say that their systems are often not that small at all. Like, here's just a, a random example. This one is three racks of 84 plus a semi-modular. This one is four racks. It looks like three of 84 and one is a little bit smaller. I mean, these are bigger than my first complete system. This one is so big it you can't even keep fit it all in the video screen. That's uh, got to be frustrating. He still hasn't finished some of the one U. This guy's planning a t small system of two racks of 84 HP, and this guy has two complete Intelligil units. This guy's getting smaller, but it still looks like two systems to me, not one. I mean. A small system for me is one that you can throw in a bag or suitcase and just take with you. I'm going to define it as something smaller than a Happy Endings kit, which is 84 HP. Now, uh, in the old days, the most common small system would have been built into one of these. This is a dope for beauty case, a small wooden enclosure. But I think they were designed more to be like overflow storage. Uh, if you had one or two modules that didn't fit into your big system and you didn't want to not use them or sell them, you could buy this as like an, an overflow option. But nowadays there's many small cases on the market. I'm using a common one. It's the 4MS Pod 40X. 40 means it has 40 HP, half as much as a Happy Endings kit. And X means the case is a little bit deeper. Uh, it can power up to four modules, remember that, it's important. And it does not come with a lid. So, just to recap, this series will be about building small self-contained systems and then programming them. I've seen videos where they tell you what to put in a small system, but they rarely follow up and show you what sounds it can make. That's what I'm going to do here. I've already assembled one small system, so I'm going to explain the modules I chose to put in it, and then I'm going to set up some patches on it so you can see what it can do. So, before we start to build, we need to make sure we have all the elements we need. To build a traditional synth, we would need an oscillator that makes sound, a filter that processes the oscillator sound, and an amplifier that sometimes allows the sound to be heard and sometimes does not. Traditionally, the amplifier is connected to an envelope so that the sound begins and ends more smoothly rather than abruptly. Note that on this graph, some lines are labeled A for audio, i.e. sound that people can hear, and the direction of the signal is generally from left to right. The signal that the envelope sends to the amplifier is not audio. We call it CV for control voltage. Control voltage can control many parameters of a synth setup. That's how we often refer to a VCO for voltage controlled oscillator, VCF for voltage controlled filter, and VCA for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. There's also a kind of module that can create CV. To understand why CV is useful, think about this. Usually a synth has knobs on it that you can twist to change a sound or adjust some function, but you've only got two hands so the number of knobs you can twist at once is limited. CV can help with this. We use a module called an LFO to create CV and send it into a module to do the job of knob twisting for you. And like a filter, there's also modules that can change or modify CV, processing it and making it different. So adding an LFO and a CV processor gives us more flexibility and allows the sounds to change more, even without direct human-controlled knob twisting. So this setup can create sounds, or more specifically one sound at a time. If we want to tr make traditional Western musical type sounds, we can connect a keyboard. The keyboard outputs two kinds of CV. One is a gate, which tells the amplifier to let the sound through. A gate is a short on-off pulse. The other kind is similar to what the envelope created, 
except in this case it tells the oscillator what pitch to play. So every time you press a key on the keyboard, a gate tells the amplifier to let sound through, and the other CV, let's call it pitch CV, tells the oscillator how high or low the pitch should be. If you play different notes on the keyboard, the pitch CV will change, but the gate will remain the same. So the system uglily illustrated here is what Bob Moog developed for his first synths. We're going to use a variation on this created by Don Buchla, another early synth developer. Instead of the amplifier and the envelope, we're going to use a single module called a low-pass gate. This allows sounds through and also reduces their higher frequencies a little. So it also does the job of a filter in some ways. You'll find out why we made this change in a moment. Also, I should point out that this system here isn't the only valid one. You could build a system based around a sampler instead of an oscillator, or you could build a system designed to do the job of a drum machine. You could also build an effects processor designed to have other sounds input into it, like a guitarist pedal board. In fact, you could even add modules that create and process video signals and combine them with the sound creation function so that the video and audio pulsate in time with each other. Whoa. But that's more than most small Eurorack systems can handle, so let's proceed with the system I've planned. So, in my small Eurorack system, I currently have six modules. Four of them require power, and two do not. They're called passive modules. Passive modules incorporate circuits that run just on the current fed to them by other modules. I find them extremely useful in small Eurorack systems because they give you functionality without drawing power. In fact, I liked them so much I bought a larger, unpowered 4MS pod and filled it with passive modules, but that's a story for another day. Let's look at each of my six modules and see what they can do. Okay, so our first module is the chips. It has not one, but two voices, or oscillators built into it. You can see they have two outputs there on the top right. So that counts as two uh, voices. And we also have an LFO for creating CV. It actually has two outputs. I think they're at different speeds. But, uh, and it has a reset input there. But essentially, yeah, two voices and uh, an LFO is what Chips is giving us. The second module is one called Disting, and I'm going to skip over that one till the end. You'll see why. Uh, the third module is Pinhole, or P-I-N-H-L. Uh, this one was actually uh, a custom request. A guy named uh, a guy from the company called Tenderfoot Electronics built it for me, and uh, and then went on to sell them. So this is just three of the same thing. It's three little low pass gates. You send an audio signal into in, and you send the audio signal out from out into your output, and you send the gate into open, which means like open the gate, let the sound through. And when, it, uh, when the module receives an open signal, the LED will light up for a moment. And it does this uh, three times. So it gives you three voices as long as you have three sound sources to feed it. And we will, thanks to, uh, we have two from the chips. Let's go on to the Woggle Bug. This is a strange looking and strangely named module. I'll definitely give you that. Uh, in fact, this is one of the first two Eurorack modules I ever bought. The other one is the Zorlon Canon Mark II. So the Wogglebug does a lot of things. Um, it's expecting, in the top left here, to be fed an oscillator signal, which it will then track, and it will create uh, two different kinds of CV, stepped and smooth, from the top right and bottom right outputs. Uh, it also will create two square waves in the audio range. So now we've got another two voices that we can use if we want to. And it will even ring modulate those two voices against each other, which is what that exploding looking uh, output is. So you can take any of those three voices and feed them into the three inputs on pinhole if you want. Uh, the one downside here is that you can't feed a pitch CV into this module to control what the what pitches the oscillators are at so they're basically uh, random or out of your control. Uh, the Wogglebug can also create gates from the two outputs that have little LEDs attached to them. And the LEDs will flash when the, LED, when the gates are created 
They're also semi-random, but they're determined by either what you're feeding it from an oscillator or from the speed of the clock knob here on the middle left with some circles around it. So, making CV, making audio, making gates, the Wogglebug is giving us three different things. Up next we have another uh, unpowered module. This one is, the image I'm showing here is a little bit different from what you'll see in my system, but the configuration is the same. It's called the R2R and it's technically a digital to audio converter, but uh, what it can do is you can send a CV into it and it will mess up that CV in interesting and weird ways and the various messed up versions of it will come out of the outputs 1 to 60, 1 to 128 here. So you get, uh, it's your way of processing CV. Uh, it could be from the Wogglebug or it could be CV from the CHIPS LFO output. And uh, the final module in my configuration from left to right is Rosie. Uh, I really like this one. I've had this one for a long time. It allows you to mix two signals here, A and B. So when the knob is fully left, you will only hear signal A, but whatever's being fed into B will be sent to your headphones, much like the Q function a DJ has on a turntable uh, mixer. So the DJ uses the, the silenced input uh, from the Q level to you know, preview what he's gonna play next. So you can, have, you can make music and have it running into Rosie's channel A, and then while you're doing that, you can be preparing another part of your system and sending it into B. And when you're ready to, you can fade A into B and hear them both. Now in our configuration, we're too small to really have two complete uh, you know, patterns or musical songs going. But basically this allows you to have a, an output you know, in guitar size uh, patch cable or in headphone output and it allows you to mix your signals together. I've got A and B as inputs, and I can also use the mono return from the effects send that it has to play the third voice, the third output from my low pass gate. And, uh, oh, of course, uh, I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't mention that this system is designed to work with a Korg SQ-1. Uh, the SQ-1 is a standalone battery-powered sequencer so it is going to provide the uh, primary source for gates that feed into the input of the uh, the low pass gate and it's also going to provide pitch cv to our oscillators in the chips so they can play semi-musical sounding notes and then finally we have uh, this one a skinny little module which is uh, somewhat confusingly labeled if you don't know what you're looking at it's called the Esti Expert Sleepers Disting. This is Mark IV. And uh, basically this is a whole bunch of modules in one. So can it be a VCO? Yes, it can. Can it be a filter? Yes, it can. Can it be an envelope and a gate? Uh, not really, but it can produce gates. Uh, can it create a CV like an LFO? Absolutely. And can it process CV? Yes, it can. In fact, you can even uh, process CV to turn it into pitch CV, which could then be fed to the, one of the chip's uh, tune inputs or pitch inputs. So the disting is really a Swiss army knife. In fact, there's one thing I didn't even label on this graph, which would be uh, like an FX out, uh, option, such as a phaser or a delay. Uh, the disting could do those as well. And thanks to Rosie's send return channel, that's where it would uh, sit in the mix, probably. That's the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. In the next video, Father Mu will program a simple melodic sequence on his small Eurorack system by connecting the modules as shown in the system diagram. <laughs>